All right, it's that uh, time of the month again where we get to open up a, another hacker box. And this time it, I'm thinking, is going to be something related to Halloween because it's getting close to Halloween. So, what do we have here? Oh, little OLEDs. And let's see how many of these we've got. Oh, just one. But, oh, look at this little box it comes in. <clears throat> OLED shield. Huh. For what purpose? I have no idea yet. Oh. Is this an ESP32 or is this something else? It looks like... Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Don't know what's in here. I've got to get some scissors. There we go. And what kind of chip do they have on this little board here? Yeah, it's an ESP, I think, 8266. It looks like the Espresso Floco, so I'm going to guess it is some form of an ESP32 or an ESP8266. And we'll try and figure that out later, but cool. And look at that, a little OLED display that goes on top of it. Get out of zoom mode. But they include other things. Well, <clears throat> USB extension cable, a, oh man, another one of these. Okay, I'm starting to think that I've got perhaps enough of these, even though I've burnt one of these up on my old phone. But anyways, um, okay, a piece of bare copper wire. A, oh, PVC tubing. More PVC tubing. Uh, what's this? Oh, a little tripod. What the heck, I can, I can make use of a little tripod. Okay, a little tripod. Uh, this is a an adapter for. Uh, that's probably uh, one quarter by twenty. So, uh, tripod mounting uh, camera. Another piece of PVC. A antenna with. Uh, Oh, a pair of antennas. Wireless and USB adapter. Huh, look at that. And digital airwaves hacker box. A PCB antenna. Look at that. Um, I'm guessing that this is in the Wi-Fi range. And we are going to build ourselves some long-range Wi-Fi communications between two locations. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Oh, okay, so a, a bunch of um, Wi-Fi connections. Wait, did my board come with a... Yeah, it did. Okay, so there is the, um, the RF connector there for the little extension cable that gives you a, um, a connector that allows you to connect up RF there. And all you LAN are belong to us. Yes, a, a war driving machine. <laughs> nice, nice. You guys, once again, a lot of fun. Okay, so here we go. Um, the uh, the LAN, a LAN channel map for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz um, Wi-Fi bands. Um, so if you are interested in removing interference between channels, um, if you're in a crowded neighborhood, these are the non-overlapping overlapping channel bands on 802.11b, 802.11gn. These are the non-overlapping channel bands here. And then when you're using 40 megahertz channel widths, the wide channels rather than narrow channels, you've only got two possible non-overlapping channel bands, so you can figure out what to do with that. And then, oh, it's a WeMOS. Okay. Um, Pro 16, which I am 
guessing is one of the ESP32 or ESP80. One of those chips are using that on the, the Wemos Pro, Pro Mini. So um, let's um, take a boo at the HackerBox website and um, see if my guesses are correct about what the heck we're going to be trying to make here. But my my suspicion is is we're trying to get some long range um, Wi Fi going here, and um, if not, well then, eh, we're driving. Okay, so one of the things we're going to do is we're going to try and get an understanding of what DBI, which is decibels isotropic actually means because that is a measure of antenna efficiency and then we're also going to get an understanding of what dbm is decibel milliwatt and that is a measure of how much power radio frequency power uh, an rf transmitter can produce and both of those are important specifications both of those are important specifications when you're trying to design RF systems. So um, one of the specifications on our, um, on our uh, little wireless N adapter is that when it's sending wireless communications over Wi-Fi, it can produce 20 decibel milliwatt dbm so what that's saying is it is 20 decibels above one milliwatt of um, transmit power so this is a thousand oh, one watt a one watt transmitter did i get that right no 10 times a hundred milliwatt transmitter so decibels are logarithmic so 10 db is a hundred or is is 100, and then another 10, and then we double that, which is logarithmic, so 20 dB is 10 times 10, which is 100 um, milliwatts of transmit power. So 0.1 watts of transmit power. DBI stands for decibels isotropic, and this is the relative efficiency when compared to an isotropic radiator. So this is actually <laughs> not a bad diagram to use to illustrate um, what an isotropic radiator is. It is a point source that you, has no preferred direction. So you imagine, way, you know, throw a rock in a pool and the ripples expand outwards. So that is an isotropic radiator in, in a single plane. A point source would be an isotropic radiator that sends out spheres of of radio waves, but um, let's let's consider a single plane for a moment. Other kinds of antennas have preferred directions and have additional gain um, above an isotropic radiator, or different types of antennas tuned to particular frequencies can have higher gain than an isotropic radiator, but also omnidirectional. So what 5 dBi is, it's, well, it's, uh, since dB is logarithmic, doubling happens at about 3, so it is 2 and maybe a half times better <coughs> than an isotropic radiator with this antenna. So that's how you measure antenna efficiencies is dBi, and how you measure transmitter power is in dBm. So this is a directional Yagi antenna. Now, for those of you who are um, of a certain age, you will remember broadcast television, whereby every house had this antenna on their roof that was directed at the nearest broadcast station where it would be delivering um, a broadca broadcast, um, airwaves, over the airwaves, like radio, uh, not internet radio, but like radio radio, actual um, vibrating the electromagnetic field in the, in the air to send information across the airwaves. It seems crazy that you could do it, but you can. And this is an example of that type of antenna, except it's tuned for... Um, uh, 
2.4 gigahertz, which is Wi-Fi frequencies. And the way you make a Yagi antenna is you have a what's called the driven element, which is either the element that you're going to be feeding signal into in order to broadcast that signal out, or you're receiving. So this element here is the driven element, and it's connected to your various pieces of, of um, trace here. And then you have a bunch of reflectors which help to the antenna to um, uh, focus the its attention on a particular range of frequencies. Now, this is going to be usually um, a, um, a simple uh, multiplier or fraction of the desired wavelength and a little bit longer than the desired wavelength, and these reflectors are going to be a little bit shorter than the desired wavelength, and that provides a tuning effect. The other thing that's interesting about this board is that it has what's called a, a ballon, uh, which is an impedance matching device. And actually, this copper trace, well, silvered copper trace, is specifically engineered to provide <clears throat> a transition, a smooth transition from the impedance of the transmission line, which is going to your, <coughs> excuse me, which is going to your um, transmitter slash receiver and the impedance of the, uh, of the antenna itself. And you might remember a ballon as the little thing, the little um, round thing that you had on the back of your television back in the broadcast television days where you had the two spade connectors that connected into the back of your um, antenna inputs on your television going off to a coax that would run up to your antenna on the roof. And I mean, uh, this is all mumbo jumbo for anybody who was born after 1973. I would guess somewhere there you would have no direct experience of any of this unless you found a retro game console that you wanted to try and hook up to your TV like a like one of the original ColecoVisions and you had no idea like how am I supposed to where's the HDMI yeah anyways so this is a pretty cool piece of uh of engineering because it is directional so it um, will be more sensitive in this axis than it is in this axis. In fact, it's immensely more sensitive in this axis than it is in this axis. And back in the day, you would actually have these things called a rotor that you could rotate your antenna on the top of your house so that you could actually aim it at different broadcast stations depending on whether or not you had line of sight to those broadcast stations. So anyways, directional Yagi antenna, very highly sensitive in a particular direction um, up to, um, I th uh, I'm guessing here, I'm going from memory and my memory is kind of flaky at times, but I think you can get 20 um, or more dB, uh, dBm of gain from, from a Yagi antenna. Maybe even more than that, because I mean, this, this little um, dipole antenna gets you 20 dBm, so I'm thinking that we can probably get more power out of that. The other thing that they included in this kit was a bunch of stuff in order to make yourself your own Yagi antenna. Because, I mean, think about this. This is just a radiator, um, a piece of copper of a particular length, and then a bunch of other copper rods of, um, a, of a determined length. So why couldn't you just make um, a bunch of holes in this thing and put pieces of copper in here for reflectors and then you have a driven element back here and then a couple of reflectors back here so that it um, uh, reflects the uh, the signal back and you've got yourself um, another directional Yagi antenna and you can tune that for any particular part of the band that you want so you could tune these within a couple of millimeters or a millimeter of uh, some fraction of the of the wavelength that you want and um, make yourself a very highly um, sensitive or high high gain directional Yagi antenna. And that's what these parts are for. Now, that's going to require some careful measuring and drilling of this pipe and then just feed some of these, maybe hot glue the uh, the conductors in and then you've got in, the, in here somewhere you'll have a driven element with the uh, wire coming out and uh, 
some sort of uh, you probably want to get some some coax i'm not sure what the um what the impedance is on here i think it's 50 ohm but i'm not 100 percent sure what um what impedance you need for these um these connectors but we can we can check but yeah that sounds like a fun project to make a um a highly directional Yagi antenna. You can also make these things out of um, uh, Pringles cans. I've seen people do um, Wi-Fi um, uh, antennas using Pringles cans, and that's using a different um, different type of antenna, but they are also highly directional because the interior of a Pringles can is aluminized. You can use it as an electrical reflector by... Um, and, and it also resin, you know, get the um, get the uh, driven element at the correct distance from the end, and you've got standing waves that'll um, that will uh, establish themselves inside of the Pringles can. But that's uh, that's a different thing. You can Google Pringles can Wi-Fi antenna. You can get a couple of kilometers out of out of those kinds of antennas, and 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 out of Yagi's as well. Um, so yeah, they're they're pretty high power and pretty 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 skookum from a from a power and efficiency perspective. So that will be fun. Which reminds me, this chip also has a Wi-Fi antenna in it. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what, uh, I think that's just a, um, inside of there, it's a ceramic encased, it might be a dipole antenna. I'm not 100% sure, but ESP8266s um, have a variety of antenna type. Now where the what the So there's a couple of different antenna types that you can get on ESP8266. So that is your standard PCB antenna and it's got basically just a, a radiator that folds back and forth across on itself and it is um, a, a single-ended antenna um, you see that quite common and then there are also the ceramic um, ceramic element um, antennas that's this guy and I'm not exactly sure what the what the actual antenna um, form factor is inside of that ceramic chip or that ceramic enclosure um, but we can we can look that up pretty easily. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. And uh, wait, uh, where did I put that? Oh yeah, okay, the ESP32. You see this part here? This is the antenna part up here. And then Right, this is a, uh, a cellular um, cellular antenna, which is shorter than your Wi-Fi antenna. This would be probably quarter wave. This would probably be half wave, um, is my guess. And then there's one other antenna type that was PCB-oriented. Just give me a sec, I'll find it. This is a dipole antenna in the FM band, and so that's about, I don't know, what is that? That's... 800 centimeters, so 160, 1.6 meters is the length of that antenna. And this is your um, 300 ohm impedance um, cable. Uh, and the ballon that I was talking about would convert the 75 ohm coax to 300 ohm impedance for the antenna inputs on, on, a, uh, on a television. Um, yeah, look that up. It's ancient history now. So that's the antenna I was looking for. That came out of a, um, a Netgear router. So once again, you see you've got the, um, the two sides of the PCB. This is actually on a piece of flexi PCB. This would be the kind of antenna you would get inside of your laptop, um, a Wi-Fi antenna from inside of your laptop. But actually this came out of a, um, out of a, uh, a Wi-Fi router that was would be in your home, and so what you've got here is um, some special tuning for a particular frequency, one reflector, and then you've got your um, your two uh, 
your your driven elements on either side and a ballon to do impedance matching to whatever the impedance is in this wire, which I would guess would be a 50 ohm um, impedance, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So anyways, yeah, that's um, a bit about um, and Yagi antennas. And the app note that they um, they link to on the um, on the instru- uh, the Hackerbox's Instructables website, it's a really good app note from from uh, Texas Instruments about the design of um, Yagi antennas on a PCB board, which is what this is. So essentially, we've got bigger brother of this guy. This would be uh, what is that? That's about half the length of that. So this, if this is a quarter wave, this would be an eighth wave. If this is a half wave, this would be a quarter wave. I would have to um, confirm what the actual wavelengths are for um, 2.4 gigahertz, but um, yeah, divide by the speed of light. Um, no, 1 over 2 FC. I forget off the top of my head what the uh, formula is for converting wavelength to frequency and whatnot. But 2.4 gigahertz, speed of light's in there. Um, exercise left for the reader. Okay, so I was going to take some measurements of this board to try and come up with um, a reverse engineering of how they designed this antenna. But doing a little bit of reading um, in <laughs> made me realize that the design of antennas is a highly empirical endeavor because many things come into play that you would um, uh, you would not suspect at first. For instance... The speed of propagation of a signal along a free air element is different than the speed of propagation of a signal along a copper trace on a piece of FR4 because of something called skin effects. Um, the You have to take into account the propagation time uh, the, the spacing between each of these elements is going to be somewhat dependent on the speed of propagation of the wave um, uh, bet- as it goes from the um, driven element through any of the various um, uh, directional elements and the reflector back here. So um, a lot of trial and error is needed in order to come up with an efficient antenna design. And um, many, many prototypes get made in order to try and figure out which are the most important parameters for your particular antenna design. So, <clears throat> in the uh, on the Instructables website, they give you a um, uh, a nice little step by step guide on how to um, create a uh, Yagi antenna out of drilling holes in this guy, and they give some suggestions for um, spacings between the various holes. Now. That is a should be looked at as a starting point. If you really want to get into it, you could design some sort of um, you know jig that would allow you to create a number of different antennas varying different things. And the things that you can vary are um, well the conductor that you're using for the reflector elements. You could vary the shape of the driven element. You could vary the size of the reflector. You can vary the distances and the spacings as they change going from front to back on your um, directional elements. You could change um, how the um, the impedance matching happens on your driven element um, into whatever um, signal you're you're carrying back to um, your uh, your measuring device you could vary the length of cable that is available to you from your driven element back to your measuring device you can minimize that length of cable by having this as an antenna that's driving another wi-fi device to send wireless signals back so you could eliminate that but then you're introducing a um a, a transmitter that is is local to this, but if you're careful with your band selection, you should be able to um, have your bands selected so that your transmit receive that you're measuring is different from the band that you're using to send back to your 
um, your your measuring device. So what I've got in mind here is this is going to be up on a this is going to be mounted up on a roof, and you're going to have your um, the signal that you're trying to catch. You know, like you know, a couple of miles away, right? You're trying to figure out if you can you can get Wi-Fi off the coffee shop that's up on the hill two miles away while you're sitting at home. So you're going to have this up on the roof of your house. You're going to point this at the coffee shop that's two miles away. And you're going to have Wi-Fi from the roof of your house down to wherever the heck your, your laptop is. So, so yeah, there's a bunch of, a bunch of um, things that you could try there. Um, and then to tune it up, you can um, uh, adjust the spacings between all of your reflector elements, tuning up the length of your reflector elements. Um, so the tuning of the reflector elements is going to, or the directional, sorry, directional elements, the reflector elements back here. The, uh, the directional elements um, will also um, have an effect on what the, um, what the gain of the antenna is. And then, of course, um, accurate positioning of the antenna. So yeah, that is um, that is a whole collection of experiments that you could try, um, and uh, you know I think it would be fun to have a group of people that have different um, parameters or different spacings that they use for the antennas, and then uh, you know varying as few of those parameters as possible, and then comparing results to come up with a. Um, a, an antenna design. So sort of like a, a crowdsourced Yagi antenna design because it's a lot of trial and error that goes into making these things. And um, what are crowds good for? One of the things that they're good for is lots of trial and error. So anyways, that's, um, that's one thought on what this, um, this hacker box might be able to provide. Um, the other thing you could do is you could... Um, uh, make a better antenna for this uh, Belfang, um, a directional antenna for, for this guy, and you could have directional pickup. Um, it's a little bit weird in that its um, F connectors are backwards, but um, you can always, or uh, SMA, uh, SM connector, SMA, yes, you're, it's got a backwards connector there, but you could, you could come up with a better um, antenna for this and tune it to the various bands. Um, I mean, uh, yeah, that, that could be a fun project as well in terms of uh of fun um and yeah uh I, frankly another well curated kit of of stuff to um spark people's curiosity and hopefully inspire some awesome uh crowd uh, sourcing of additional um refinements to the wi-fi yagi antenna design anyways um might do more on this. I'm not sure, but um, definitely there is lots of room for uh, fun to be had if you're at all inclined into that sort of uh, that sort of area. Anyways, thanks for watching.